thunder of jets and an open sky, a streak of gray and a cheerful... A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of... Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. Hurry, Bullwinkle! The show's about to start! I'm coming as fast as I can! Wave to the people! Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph! The thief, John Smith. But your name is Bullwinkle! I know, but that's hard to spell. Sure, there's always room for one more. Minnesota, in the lower regions of the high country, in the middle of Lake Saldabane, Boris Batanov and his partner Natasha were enjoying the tranquility of unspoiled nature, the warm sunshine, the fresh air. <laughs> Boris, why you're coughing? I'm used to breathing good old city smug, Natasha. This fresh air is killing me. <laughs> then why we're here in this silly boat? He's not a silly boat. He's a glass bottom boat. Sounds pretty silly to me. Look down there, Natasha. What do you see? I see funny looking nose, little mustache. Looks very familiar. It should. That's my reflection. I forgot to clean the glass. Wait. There. Now what do you see? I see great big X. Aha! We are in the right spot. Right spot? Of course. Look here at this treasure map. X marks it this spot. Treasure map? This is map showing the lost treasure of Montezum. You mean Montezuma, old Aztec Indian? No, Montezum, the big race car driver. Was he rich? Was he rich? Just ask me. Okay, was he rich? Rich enough to bury a treasure at the bottom of this lake. That's all, honey bone. Yeah, but how do we get it? Easy. We blow up the dam and let the water run out. But if we blow up dam, water will rush down on innocent people in Frostbite Falls. <laughs> true, true. Oh, Boris, you are mean, sneaking, no good, Nick. I know, Mr. Wonderful, that time. And so the two villains prepared to blow up the dam, never remembering that our heroes, Bullwinkle and Rocky, always arrive in the ta-da nick of time. Don't be silly, I want them to arrive in the ta-da nick of time. You do? And I'm ready, observe. World's only patented Dreamsville Moosehorn. Dreamsville Moosehorn? Sure, when I blow it, Moose will forget about everything else in the world. Including dynamite. Right. Bullwinkle really digs that crazy cool Northwood sound. But what about Squirrel? For him, I got a gun. Just plain gun? Look, I can't be tricky all the time. I got other things to think about. Now let's put dynamite on them. Meanwhile, not too far away, as the crow flies. <laughs> That's me! Well, Bullwinkle and Rocky, charter members of the Frostbite Falls Bird Watching and Pinochle Society. Unfortunately, today is the day for bird watching. Put down one crow, Bullwinkle. One crow. You spell that with a C, friend. Oh, thanks. No E on the end. Get out of here, you smart aleck crow. Bullwinkle, that's one of our little feathered friends. Friends, my eye. I joined the club to watch him. I don't have to like him. Well, here, it's your turn to take the classes. I'll write down all the birds you see. Okay. Let's see. Uh, one tufted titmouse. Check. One black cap chickadee. Check. No chick. Check, check. Chickadee? No chick. Forget it. Put down Robin Redbreast. Okay. One yellow bellied sapsucker. Check. No, cross that out. I can't stand a coward. Oh, come on, Bullwinkle. All right. Say, there's a big nosed fuse lighter. A big nosed fuse lighter? Male or female? There's one of each. Let me see those glasses. Bullwinkle, those are saboteurs. One or two bees. We gotta stop them. And desert my bird-watching post? Never. And Bullwinkle, our hero, mind you, refused to move. While on the dam, the fuse burns shorter and shorter. Don't miss our next episode, Floodwaters or Drown in the Valley. 
Last time, you remember, Boris and Natasha were preparing to blow up a dam in order to find hidden treasure. Yes, it's the lost treasure of Montezum. No, no, it isn't, darling. What you mean, Natasha? He said like a good straight man. No, it's the found treasure of Montezum. Oh, boy. And although our hero, Bullwinkle, spotted the villains while bird watching, he refused to go after them. Never! But this is more important than bird watching, Bullwinkle. If they blow up the dam, think of what'll happen to all those poor people in Frostbite Fall. Those poor people will get mighty soggy. Well, let's go. Not so fast, Rock. We're the heroes, remember? So? So the heroes always arrive in the ta-da nick of time. I don't want to show up early and spoil the suspense. And I don't want to show up late and get blown up. Uh, you got a point there. Heck with the suspense. Let's go! But what Bullwinkle and Rocky didn't know was that Boris Batonov was waiting for them with not one, but two weapons. A Dreamsville moose horn and a squirrel gun. <laughs> I blow moose horn and moose forgets all about dynamite until kaboom! And what about squirrel? He also get kaboom? No, no. For him, he's poom poom with squirrel gun. And so as Bullwinkle and Rocky dashed under the dam and reached for the fuse, Boris raised the fatal Dreamsville moose horn horn to his lips, and... And the one and the two and... Uh, Boris. <laughs> Boris. Natasha, I think I've lost my lip. I think you got a duck horn instead of a moose horn. Hmm, could be you're right. <laughs> Kinda crazy sound, though. <laughs> Real cool, Daddy-o, but it doesn't stop moose and squirrel. Don't worry, I still got squirrel gone. So use it. Okay, ready, aim, fire. What's that? Boris, we forgot. There's no violence allowed on television anymore. Well, Bullwinkle, we did it. We arrived in the ta-da nick of time. We always arrive in the ta-da nick of time. The ta-da nick of time. You said that. I know, I just love to go ta-da. Well, all is lost, Natasha. Might as well throw away the treasure map. Why not just pull the plug at the bottom of lake? Pull the plug? Yes, look. Raskalnikov. Sure enough, the treasure map indicated a large plug at the bottom of Saldabane Lake. See, the chain leads to this float in the middle of the lake. So a little later, Boris was at the float and tugging at the chain that would empty the lake and reveal the lost treasure of Montezum. A little later, he was still tugging. Much later, he was still tugging. Gee, I wonder what happened to the saboteurs who were trying to blow up the dam. Well, they wouldn't hang around. Help! SOS, help! What's that? Sounds like somebody in trouble on the lake. Come on. And within a few minutes, Bullwinkle had crashed his way to the side of Boris's boat. What's all the trouble? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Spencer Traceback, the famous actor. Yeah. I saw you in that picture about the old man fighting with the great big fish. Keen picture. Thanks, kid. But I got it a fish here that's even bigger, and I need help to drag it in. Well, I'm your man. Moose. Yeah, moose. And Bullwinkle began pulling on the chain, which would pull the plug, which would empty the lake, which would uncover the treasure, which would... Mister, you got a bad case of which woods there. <clears throat> I know. Anyway, be with us next time for A Leak in the Lake or The Drain Maker. In the last episode, Bullwinkle and Boris were trying to pull the plug out of the bottom of Lake Saldabane. The reason is that at the bottom of the lake, in this waterproof casing, lies the treasure of Montezum. Yes, and I'm going to get it back, or my name isn't, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Spencer Traceback. Of course, Bullwinkle thought he was helping Spencer Traceback, the actor, drag in a big fish. Just like in the movies. Boy, he must be a whopper. No, he's a bluefin toonie. That anything like a piano toonie? But before Boris could answer with still another tired joke, the plug pulled loose and the water began to rush out of the lake. Uh oh I think we lost him. And small wonder you're not using a hook. It must have fallen off. Well, I guess it's back to the salt mines. If someone would only dive down and find the hook. See, why don't I do it, Mr. Traceback? Oh, I couldn't think of asking you to do a thing like that. Then why are you pushing me? But if you insist... And Bowwinkle suddenly found himself in the water. Boris, if he dives down, he will find treasure. He'll also find the hole that's draining the lake. Sure enough, far beneath the water, Bowwinkle was struggling against the pull of the water, running out of the hole at the bottom of the lake. Fortunately, his plight had not gone unseen. Hold on, Bowwinkle! And Rocky, that plucky squirrel, launched himself into a fancy swan dive. But as luck would have it, at that moment, the last of the water drained out of the lake. So there was Rocky, out like a light. Boris and Natasha free to get the treasure, and Bullwinkle Moose... Oh, well, good heavens, where is he? Right down there, Poopsie. Yes, our hero had disappeared down the drain. Right. But, gee, that means that there are no good guys left.
Funny how that works out. Come on, Natasha. And with no one to stop them, the two villains went directly to the huge waterproof casing that shielded the treasure of Montezuma. Fortunately, the waterproof casing turned out to be villain-proof, too. Hold it, Natasha. I'm bushed. If I got to work this hard to get rich, I might as well get a job. Oh, Boris, what you said. Meanwhile, Rocky had come to his senses and was standing beside the hole where Bullwinkle had been pulled from sight. There's only one thing to do. I gotta fly down there after him. And adjusting his goggles, the plucky squirrel zoomed down into the hole. Oh, such loyalty, Boris. It's... It kind of gets you right here. Yes, Natasha, and I'm going to do something about it, too. What? I'm going to plug up the hole. And the wily Boris slammed the plug back into place and stamped it down tight, trapping our heroes far underground where they were zooming through the water supply system of Frostbite Falls. Our scene now changes rather abruptly to the interior of an apartment house in the suburbs of Frostbite Falls, where... Nearly was lady last night she died, told the bell for... Oh, rats, what happened to the hot water? Hey, Super, let's have some hot water up here! You got all there is, turn the tap on all the way! Oh, very well. Nelly was a lady, last night she died, told the, the bell for lovely, lovely Nell, Nell, my sweet virginity bride. bride. Oh, for cry I, it's a monster. No, I'm more of a second tenor. How'd you get in there? Never mind that. The real question is, how am I going to get out? Yes, Bullwinkle was jammed into a bend in the water pipe, and what's more, it was a hot water pipe. Yeah, I'm getting the world's first instant hot foot. Instant hot foot? Take one foot and add boiling water. Uh, uh, don't miss our next episode, Bullwinkle Cleans Up, or the Desperate Showers. Last time, you remember, Rocky was chasing Bullwinkle through the water system of Frostbite Falls. Little did he know that high above him, the moose was stuck in an irate citizen's shower nozzle. Fortunately, the irate citizen spun the tap wide open, shooting Bullwinkle out of the pipes entirely. Thanks a mill, friend. But you're over six feet tall. How could you get through a little skinny water pipe? I held my breath. Superintendent, help! Well, if you're gonna act like that, goodbye. Now, what's the matter? What's the matter? You got enough hot water, haven't you? I just found a moose in my shower. A mouse in your shower? Not a mouse, a moose! Maybe you ought to switch to cold showers for a while. I never heard of anything, so... Hey, either of you ladies seen a moose go by here? Ladies? That way. Thanks. Do you realize that a squirrel just came out of the shower, called us ladies, and acted as if a moose went by? And there's a good reason for it. What? His goggles were all steamed up. Oh! It was true. With his goggles all foggy, Rocky walked right past Bullwinkle without even seeing him. Hey, Rocky! Bullwinkle, is that you? It was when I got up this morning. I must be getting nearsighted. You sure look fuzzy. Well, let's face it, Rock. I am fuzzy. Meanwhile, at the dry lake bottom, Boris and Natasha were still trying to break into the enormous treasure chest. Oh, it's no use, Boris. We can't do it. Well, I guess we'll have to use a Pottsylvanian persuader. A Pottsylvanian persuader? What's that? Two pounds TNT in a one pound bag with instructions. Oh. Let's see. Instructions say place bag next to object to be persuaded. Check. Light fuse. Check. Then it says caution. This persuader has. Has what? Just a minute. It's in small print. Oh. Caution. This persuader has. A quick burning fuse. But though the explosive did a good job on Boris and Natasha, it didn't phase the treasure of Montezuma. Perhaps we should ask ourselves, Natasha, is it worth all the effort? Is a cheesy million dollars treasure worth getting blown up for? Is a million dollars really that important? Is money everything? I give up, darling, is it? You bet it is. Get back to work. But unbeknownst to the two eager villains, our heroes were dashing to the scene of the crime. Why are we dashing thusly? Because the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. I don't want to destroy your childlike faith, Rock, but we're not the criminal. No, but when the real criminals do return to the scene of the crime, we'll catch them red-handed. Do you follow me? I have to. We're on the same bicycle. Meanwhile, the wily Boris had rigged up a primitive block and tackle and dragged the enormous treasure chest to a high bluff overlooking the dry lake. Now, as soon as we cut the cable, chest drops down onto those rocks, splits wide open. And? Happy days are here again. Hey, 
Well, as luck would have it, our heroes chose that moment to pedal their bicycle across the bottom of the dry lake and right under the enormous chest. Natasha, do my eyes deceive me? They wouldn't dare. It's fantastical. We get to open up treasure chest and shut up moose and squirrel at the same time. Oh, you're such a lucky schnook. Well, you know what I always say. Somebody down there likes me. And Boris prepared to snip the cable and send the treasure chest hurtling down on our heroes. Don't miss our next rather unpleasant episode, Burris Bashes a Box or the Flat Chest. Well, the treasure of Montezuma may be worth a million dollars, but it doesn't look as if anybody's going to collect it. For the enormous treasure chest has so far resisted the efforts of Boris and Natasha to pry it open, <coughs> chop it open, <coughs> even blow it open. Boris, we need a safe cracker. We got a safe cracker. Whom? Meme, that's whom. Boris, you know how to crack a safe. Sure, Mike. You just lift the safe up in the air like this, and when you cut the cable... Yes? Crack! Oh, that's straight thinking, darling. And for me, straight thinking is tough. Why? I got a crooked mind. Well, as luck would have it, our heroes chose that moment to pedal their bicycle bill for two right under the hanging chest. Gee, I don't see any sign of those two spies, Bullwinkle. Uh... What spies are those, Rock? The spies who drained this lake. This is a lake? Oh, boy, have you forgotten the plot again? In a word, you said it. That's three words. I'm a heavy tipper. Now, what's the plot? Here, I'll draw you a picture. And all unaware of the frightful fate hanging over their heads, Rocky began to draw pictures to bring Bullwinkle up to date on our story. We were bird watching, remember? Yeah. We saw two spies ready to blow up the dam. Yeah. We put out the fuse. Good for us. One of them disguised himself as an animal. Actor named Spencer Traceback. My favorite. Then he slickered you into pulling a big plug out of the bottom of the lake. Shame, shame. Revealing a big treasure chest. This is the exciting part. And we went down the drain together. Wowie. And now we're back here looking for the two spies. Well, that is a dandy. Hey, what did you draw above us there? That's the treasure chest that's hanging over our yike. Hanging over our yike? That's an odd place to. Well, we go out. I, I can't rock. Something happened. I can't move. Go on, Boris. Cut the rope. I'm trying. What's the matter? These snippers must be dull. Here, darling. Try this. What is it? It's my switchblade nail file. And Boris leaped on top of the chest and began sawing at the rope. Run, Bowwinkle! I can't. I must be froze with fear. No, you're not. You're standing on your own foot. Doesn't everybody? I mean, your right foot is standing on your left. Oh, okay, break it up down there. And our heroes dashed out of the way just as the rope let go. Good work, Boris. But unfortunately for Boris, he'd forgotten he was still on top of the chest. And what's more, as it fell, the chest turned over so Boris was underneath it. Don't worry, darling. Remember, this is just cartoon. Oop. Boris, are you all right? Natasha, I just found out what happens when a cartoon chest falls on a cartoon character. What? It hurts. And what's more, darling? What could be what's more? The chest still isn't open. Fui and double fui. That voice, Bullwinkle. Where have I heard that voice? I heard something like it once when I dropped the chicken bone in the garbage disposal. That does it, Natasha. Come on. We're going to get an A-bomb. A-bomb? A-bomb, come on. Did you hear that, Bullwinkle? Sure, they repeated it twice. Do you know what A-bomb means? Certainly. A-bomb is what some people call our program. I don't think that's so funny. Neither do they, apparently. And while our heroes engage in airy persiflage, the two villains are on their way. Don't miss our next explosive episode, one, two, three, gone, or I've got plenty of nothing. Well, Boris tried to drop the treasure of Montezuma on our heroes, but wound up hoist with his own petard. Meanwhile... Hold it! Hold that! What means this hoist with my own de 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 watsis? It means you fell into your own trap. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Okay, let's go. 
Finally, in desperation, he and Natasha set out to find an A-bomb to blow up the chest. Gee, that must be a pretty valuable treasure, Bullwinkle. Big, anyway. Maybe we could get that chest open. Well... Of course, those spies tried hammering it and chopping it, blowing it up, dropping it off a cliff. Well... So how can we open it? Well... What do you think, Bullwinkle? Well... What's your considered opinion? If you'd stop talking, I'll tell you. Well, I was just trying to build up a little suspense. Why don't we just try turning the key? The key? Yes, right there in plain sight was a key. And when Bullwinkle turned it, the entire box flopped open, revealing at last the treasure of Montezum. Whoa! A 193 Apperson Jackrabbit. That's a treasure? Isn't it, though? I must say, I'm disappointed. Well, then go ahead. What? Say it. Okay, I'm disappointed. And, and I'm, I'm Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle. Yeah, I know. Well, I guess the only thing we can do is drive it into town and turn it over. What? To the authorities. Oh. How do we start it? Well, it says right here on the instruction sheet, let's see, stand in front of machine, seize, crank, spin crank sharply. <laughs> First, making sure car is out of gear. Hey, Rock, wait up! And so when Boris and Natasha returned to the scene... We couldn't find an A-bomb, not even a war surplus one. Boris, look, somebody beat us to the treasure. Raskalnikov! But at that moment, Boris's sharp eyes spotted the instruction sheet that Bullwinkle had dropped. I, I say, at that moment, Boris's sharp eyes had spotted the... I heard you, I heard you! Well... I can't see it anywhere. It's right under your nose. You're crazy. It's nowhere inside. Boris, darling. Invisible ink I can find. Boris. Invisible papers, no. Darling. What is it, Natasha? You are sitting on it. Y oh. You said it was under my nose. Sorry. What does it say? It says the treasure was really just an old card. Oh, boy. Lucky we got a regular job to fall back on. What's that? Breaking windows at the UN building. Let's go. Oh, if those two villains had only seen the license plate of that car, they oh. would... What, what? What's that whispering? What was that? Um, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. We got ways of finding out, you know. W ways of... How? Easy. We're on program backwards and forwards again. Like this. Oh, if those two villains had only seen the license plate of that car... That's what you said. Natasha, what's with the license plate? It's only a number, Boris. What number? 14K. 14K. What? 14 carat? Natasha, 14 carat, that car is solid gold. Come on. Oh, what have I done? You have just signed death warrant for a moose, darling. Oh, dear. And stretch the whole plot out for two more episodes. And we'll see one of them next time called All the Glitters or Baby, It's Gold Outside. Last time, you remember, Bullwinkle Moose outsmarted us all by finding a way to get into the treasure chest of Montezum. Viva, turn the key. Hokey smoke, it's just an old car. Just an old car indeed. This here is a genuine 193 Apperson Jackrabbit. How do you know? It said so in the last episode. Our heroes decided to donate the car to the Frostbite Falls Museum and drove it away. But when Boris and Natasha spotted the license plate... It says 14K, darling. Do you think... I don't have to think, Natasha. I know. This is a 14 carat solid gold automobile. Let's face it, Boris. These Americans really know how to live. Come on, Natasha. Let's take the shortcut. We're about to go into the used car business. On purpose? And so a little later, as our boys wanted to turn, a strange sight met their eye. Madman Morris, the laughing Latvian, used car. Well, we might as well stop. How come? Madman Morris has put up a roadblock. It was true, an enormous tree truck lay right across their path. Well, ho, 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 howdy, friends and neighbors. That must be Madman Morris himself. Are you the laughing Latvian? <laughs> you were expecting the angry Afghan. Can we get by here? Certainly. The best buy in these parts, a late model Ossil 8. An Ossil 8? And I can make you an unbelievable offer on this junk pile you're driving. Yeah, but we're not... $26 and that's top money. Take it or leave it. Without Defender, $25. You were right. It's unbelievable. Sounds pretty good, Rock. Bullwinkle, we were going to give this car to the museum. But 26 bucks. That's antihistamine money, you know. Antihistamine money? It's not to be sneezed at. 
it. Yeah, but we promised... You get it, Rock? Not to be sneezed at. Bullwinkle. <laughs> this medical type joke I threw in there. You get it? I got it. Thousands won't. You said it. Well, is it a deal? Uh, how much is the Ossel 8? Now, never you mind about the price. I don't want you to clutter your little furry head with the lot numbers. That's kind. Just sign here, easy payments for next 20 years. Uh, what's it say way down here? Don't read the fine print. You want to ruin those beautiful blue eyes? They are kind of limpid pools, aren't they? Is the car in good condition, Mr. Morris? Of course, only one owner. A little old lady in Pennsylvania. Hey, isn't that Pasadena? Far from it, darling. And she only used it on Sundays, didn't you, Granny? That's right, darling. Ba ba boom. You're the little old lady who drove this car? Actually, I didn't drive it, darling. I used to sit in and listen to the radio. Vroom, vroom. The radio? AM. AM and PM. Oh, I love that, Merton Marge. Easy, Granny. You're dating yourself. Vroom, vroom, darling. So how's it about it? Well, I don't know. Okay, you've driven me to the wall. I surrender. Have no mercy on me. All right. I'll pay you $30 cash as is. Wowee! And I throw in two all-day suckers. Sensation! See what you can do if you know how to bargain, Bullwinkle? Lucky you got a good head on you, Rock. Yeah. Or you'd have to wear your hat on your neck. And in a twinkling, the papers have been signed, and Boris and Natasha drove off on our hero's 1903 Jack Jackrabbit. Hey, man, man, Morris, wait a minute. You forgot. Yeah, where's the two suckers? Well, the answer to that is so obvious we won't even wait around for it. But be with us next time for Burris Wheels and Deals or A Profit Without Honor. Well, in our last episode, Boris Badenov went into business as Madman Morris, a shady used car dealer. Of course, he only had one car on the lot, and that was made of cardboard. When I say low overhead, folks, I mean low overhead. In minutes, Boris had flim-flammed our heroes into buying a paper convertible and selling him their Epperson Jackrabbit. Of course, when Bullwinkle went to kick a tire on their new car... Oh, my gosh! Gee, I don't know my own strength. Bullwinkle, this is a catastrophe. It's supposed to be a convertible. Meanwhile, the two villains had just crossed the bridge at Buzzer's Gulch. Why were you stopping, Boris? Did you see that charming wooden bridge we just passed? What's so charming about the wooden bridge? It burns, that's what. And the crafty fiend set fire to his end of the bridge just as our hero set foot on the other side. Rocky, the bridge is on fire! But if we stop now, they'll get away! The situation poses a rather precise ethical dilemma fraught with portent, don't it? What does that mean? I don't know, I heard it on Meet the Press. There's only one thing to do, Bullwinkle. Get a dictionary! No, I gotta fly through the fire! You sure that's the only way, Rock? No, but if you're gonna be a hero, you gotta do stupid things every once in a while. Okay! Ready, Ali! Oh! And Bullwinkle flung Rocky right into the flames. Meanwhile, Boris and Natasha were in the office of a notorious receiver of stolen property. I'm Andy Grift, your friendly neighborhood fence. You say you got a car made of gold? You sir, it is a fender for you to test, Andy. It don't look like gold. It's painted. Underneath is 14 carats. What's it worth, darling? Well, offhand, I'd say at least... Yes, yes. yes. Two dollars even. Two dollars? For a gold fender? Gold my eye, that's ten. Ten? Oh, boy. No, oh, you've done it again, Boris. But I could swear. Not on this program, darling. Face it, the car is worthless. Not quite. We still need it. For what? To make getaway. Look up there. Yike! Yike, indeed. For high in the air, sand scorched, but every furry inch a hero was Rocky the Flying Squirrel. Now, let's hear it out there for Rocky. Yeah. Thanks, folks. Faster, Boris, he's gaining on us. The car is too heavy, Natasha. We got to lighten it. Throw out everything loose. Well, the two crooks threw out the spare tire, the headlights, the engine cover, the fenders, even the doors. He's still gaining on us. Open the trunk, Natasha. Maybe there's something heavy in there. Boris, the trunk is full of gold pieces. And they're heavy. Get rid of them. And Natasha began throwing away shovelfuls of gold coins. It's working, darling. It's costing us a million, but we're gaining on it. All that gold I can't watch. And Boris covered his eyes. A rather serious mistake for the car slewed around and headed right back to where it started from. The edge of Buzzer's Gulch. Oop. Boris, we're falling. Raskalnikov, if those goody goods think they... Boris, hmm? do me one favor before we hit. Certainly, Poopsie. Shut up your mouth! Meanwhile, Rocky and Bullwinkle were examining a handful of gold coins. Well, Bullwinkle, we got the treasure of Monty Zoom. Shucks, I knew we would all along. Huh? 
Sure, in a cartoon, we always have a happy ending, you know. We walk off arm in arm into a cartoon sunset without a scratch on us and... <laughs> must be one of those adult cartoons. Well, we'll see about that. Probably next time in the further adventures of Bullwinkle. This episode is over, but the very best of my collection is banned on YouTube. To see what you have been missing, go to archive.org and search for Gyro Screw Loose, and I'll see you there.